Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Stefan, and today we're going to continue on with our series on the Tall Swarm. Episode 2, on the highest difficulty settings in game, we are playing with Grand Admiral AI with Advanced AI Starts. And so, yeah, quite difficult, high aggressiveness, Glavius is Advanced AI. Let's go ahead and resume our save. So, last we left off, we had just encountered our first Xenos Empire, they really don't seem to like us, and I can't really blame them. We're a single massive hive mind, and our main goal is to destroy every single living thing in the galaxy, so can't really blame them. Now, as far as how we're going to achieve it, you know, let's get into that right now. First and foremost, I'd like to go ahead and build up a nice little science ship and uh, start exploring this area of the galaxy. This is going to give us some ample intel on uh, what is going on over here and uh, how close this empire is to coming over to Skull and devouring us. Uh, as far as fortification, of course, uh, let me just upgrade some of these star bases and ensure that nothing gets through. Uh, although I'll actually hold off on upgrading Skull, it doesn't seem that there's any empire too too close, and so instead I'll save the alloys and uh, build a nice little colony ship instead. After all, colonization is still important. I'd like to go ahead and colonize some of these tomb worlds because even though they have low habitability, uh, the penalties aren't too bad because it's only plus 100% pop amenities usage, which is relatively simple to get with hive mines, uh, since well, amenities don't require any resources, uh, just a building, and uh, pop upkeep is increased. It is a pain to be handing out two food per every little bug that we have, but it is well worth it for the extra pop growth and uh, getting that pop growth from multiple planets. It's going to be quite nice because that's going to be 570 a month and getting extra pops is always good. So let's go ahead and queue up a nice little colony ship. Our economy is going down the gutter, so let's correct that as soon as possible with our nice little planets. And uh, yeah, hope for the best. Yes, All right. Uh, now we get our next look into the tradition tree, and for this one, let's go ahead and get some supremacy going. Supremacy is going to help us out with uh, some bonuses to our star bases and uh, bonuses to fleet power overall. And so that's going to increase the power of these defensive stations that we have here, and uh, we're going to have also at Skull, and uh, it's going to help us out in terms of uh, well defending against Xenos scum. Ooh, Delta Aliens. Looks like we've discovered our good neighbors over here, and indeed we have, so let's send our science ship back. We don't need to concern ourselves with this area anymore. And, uh, well, prepare for the worst, because they're only one jump away from destroying us. Ooh, what do we have here? A shielded world. I think I know what this is up to. Let's see this anomaly. Yes, this is an interesting event. Let's discover this right now because, uh, well, I'm pretty sure that we can get some pretty good border control up in here after researching this anomaly, and I'll show you how in just a sec. And we also have the Caravaneers. Disgusting. They should all die. They do have some pretty ships, though. Wish I had them. Wish you can make that a style. Alright, we have been discovered by the foundation of Tekanja. We sense prey. Ooh, not good. Uh, however, they are pacifists, so this is gonna hold them off for a little bit in terms of attacking us, but I'd like to be on the safe side and still build up the station once I can. However, uh, I'd love to sneak out a little bit of an extra colony ship over to send to these tomb worlds and uh, benefit from it more than uh, just having a station out here doing nothing. And now we get to the event that I was talking about, the time loop on this shielded world. Marfark 3 is burning up. The planet is enclosed in a shield that is capturing Marfark's radiation, hitting it into what will soon be uninhabitable temperatures. 
In the scorching heat, an advanced civilization of tiny squamate reptilians scurry about in frenzied activity. Some event of great magnitude seems to be in the works. Yet, as tension peaks, time stops without warning, then stretches and morphs until, impossibly, the reptilians are back where they started. They appear to be locked in a time loop, a hopeless cycle of fast-forwarded repetition, starring at the birth of their civilization. In mere hours, countless generations can be observed living out their lives, unaware they have been condemned to crispy, certain death. But we have discovered a crack in the shield that might allow us to change their fate. Well, let's interrupt this time loop and have these guys benefit us. Uh, however, first and foremost, I'd like to, you know, actually claim the system and this system. Because what this is going to do is uh, create an empire of uh, tiny little fanatic purifiers in a single system with a citadel. And so that could potentially serve us quite nicely. <clears throat> Alrighty, we have now colonized our first tomb world and um, things are not looking that bad. We are quite low in amenities uh, right away, however this is going to be fixed by the presence of some of our maintenance do jobs uh, that come from our planet, so that's quite nice. And uh, yeah, colonizing the planets will likely prevent the Catlings from appearing, but even if they do, we're going to om nom nom them and it's going to be all good in the end. Ooh, star holds. Perfect. Star holds are pretty much going to guarantee our survival. If we can afford to upgrade these star bases as soon as possible, uh, it's going to ensure that we're going to be able to get a couple thousand fleet power over on our borders, and that's going to prevent any sort of attacking fleet from overwhelming us early on in the game. So, looking forward to being able to build those, and uh, we're going to have to save up some alloys to get that done. Alright, now that we have the system of Marfark surrounded, uh, we can actually go ahead and uh, start researching the anomaly that's over here. We can interrupt the time loop and uh, let the pricky T appear. Our special project is complete. Oh. Well, there goes that idea. The time loop has been interrupted, and a big bang has formed. The good news is that we have broken the time loop on Marfark 3. The bad news is that its inhabitants did not survive the ordeal. The loop, which has been caused by an artificial singularity field that curved space and time within the shield, was set to deactivate on an unknown but very specific change in the lizard's behavior. Our scientists believe it may have had something specific to do with their somewhat aggressive tendencies. Through a stupefying coincidence, we managed to break the loop at a moment when the lizards had their tiny paws on the nuclear launch trigger. Within seconds of their release, the reptilians had disappeared in a fiery inferno of nuclear devastation. Well then, seems like a rather bad world at this point because, uh, well, no districts. And uh, that is quite regrettable. That means that this is just a regular old system. And uh, the thing with the pricky tea appearing will never be the case because, well, the game has decreed so. I spent all this time talking about the breaky tea and uh, they don't decide to show up. How unfortunate. Alrighty, looks like we're reaching ample amounts of food production and indeed it is time to enact the policy of nutritional plentitude. It's gonna massively boost pop upkeep. However, it is gonna provide us with a little bit more pop growth across all our planets, and so now we're reaching 6.69 pop growth per month. Quite nice overall, considering the early part of the game. Oh, well the game just decided to crash, and now we're back to a rough approximation of where we were before, so let's continue on and uh, hopefully not crash this time. Please game, 
Don't do this to me. Ooh, the doorway. Looks like this appears in pretty much like every single run I've had so far. What can only be described as a dimensional portal has been discovered in a remote location on the decayed hub. One of the prediction algorithms noticed a strange air current, which was eventually determined to be caused by the slight leakage of atmosphere into the portal. The rate of loss is far too small for it to make any difference on the decayed hub, but the very existence of this portal raises some disturbing questions, such as where does it lead to? And could something come through the portal from the other side? Let's research this. It's only going to take us 16 months and uh, see where this leads. Either way, it's going to provide us some good jobs on the planet and a bunch of research. So that is always nice. Mirror, mirror. Strangely, the dimensional portal on the Decayed Hub seems to connect to a planet which looks very much like the Decayed Hub. Stranger still, there's a signal being broadcast to us through it. Let's put it on screen. And let's see what these Xenos have to say. Portal Alien Communication This is Rudolf Eitler of the 2 Quintillion IQ Swarm. Who are you, Portal Aliens? Hmm. No, I am Rudolf Eitler. Who are you? Fascinating. If what you say is true, I think the portal bridges the gap between alternate dimensions. We are both Rudolf Eitler, but at some point an event must have caused our respective dimensions to diverge. Amazing! Tell us how your spooters fare. Much the same way as it fares in your dimension, I expect. We have spread out through space from Pathoria since the discovery of the warp drive. The warp drive? I thought that was removed in patch 2.0. We traveled by hyperlanes. Hyperlanes? Perhaps discovering different types of FTL travel was the divergence point between our two universes? Does this mean you are not beset by warp beasts? Ha! Huh, I wonder what universe this refers to. No warp beasts here. Are they a serious threat? The warp beasts assail every known civilization and they are a threat to all life. As far as we have determined, once warp travel reached a certain critical level of the galaxy, the warp beasts awoke and attacked. Several species we know of have already fallen, but so far we are holding them off. Sounds like heresy. Can we help? Yes, we should establish an interdimensional trade treaty to strengthen both our nations. For the benefit of all spooters. Alright, sounds good. Uh, it seems that this interdimensional trade is producing some energy and amenities, so thank you so much, fellow spooters. And so with that, I believe it's a pretty good time to wrap up the episode. We have achieved quite a lot. We have improved our research capacity and our production capacity overall. So that is quite nice. We have a bunch of planets where pops are growing. Of course, some of these are costing us a lot more than others. Uh, however, it's all right. 2.5 food per pop is not that bad. And uh, we can manage, sort of. We just need another farm district and all our food problems will just magically disappear. As far as our border security goes, uh, it's doing quite fine. Sabic and uh, Shoal are being upgraded. And uh, soon enough, they'll be able to withstand any attack launched by the AI. Um, after turning domineering or hostile, AI does like to take its time before attacking you. And so we have a couple of years at least before uh, we get attacked by these guys. And our good pacifist friends over here are too happy with us returning the cargo. And so are simply unfriendly. So safety from this side and hopefully delayed death and destruction from this front. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. I have a Discord and a Patreon, links are in the description, and I'll see you guys next one. Bye bye.